in this course so far, and this is the way with a lot of physical science, there's the, there's the stuff without numbers, like what an atom looks like, kind of what the electrons are doing, how a compound is arranged, and then there's the numbers part. Um, the numbers are very important to what we say quantify things in, in science. It, they just are. And so this concept of stoichia uh, problems called stoichiometric calculations are very numbers oriented. And some of them, some of you will like that numbers, numbers orientation sort of thing, and some of you won't. But here we go. Stoichiometry in general is just talking about the quantitative relationship between the reactants and the products. And we're going to do some stoichiometric calculations here soon in this part. And I liken stoichiometry to uh, very much kind of like a, uh, like a recipe. So like um, if we were going to make brownies, brownies would be our product. Brownies. Okay. And to make our product, we might need one egg. Okay. And we need two cups of flour and one half cup of sugar. We'll just kind of start out like that, okay? Now, the stoichiometry of this recipe is a kind of a one egg, two cups of flour to one half cup of sugar, and the brownies that you will form. Now, brownies isn't enough. It's all about quantitative. It's all about numbers. So we could say maybe this one batch of brownies will give you... Uh, what do you think? Uh, 24 serving, 24 brownies. 24, okay, 24 brownies. So now we have a number. So with our 1, 2, and 1 half, we get 24. See how that works? That's like the stoichiometry of the recipe. And we're going to kind of take this up a notch. Now, if I were to put reactants and products, how would I do that with regard to, um, to my ingredients? and my yummy thing that I, that I produce. Of course, we would have reactants over here. Those are like our uh, ingredients. And they go to form products, which is the yummy thing that we're going to eat. Okay? Very similar, I think. Just don't lick the spoon, so they say in chemistry, right? So I think we've talked, we've uh, actually, this is, a, uh, you pulled off this experiment in the lab where you burned magnesium ribbon in the presence of uh, oxygen and you formed magnesium oxide. And so this is balanced. Now, the, we have a balance with coefficients of what, 2? Let me grab my marker here. Coefficients of 2, and what's the coefficient from the O2? A coefficient of 1. And, and two across the board. We get the same number of magnesium and oxygen atoms on either side of the reaction arrow. We talked about that before. So when I balance an equation like this, I usually think on the small scale. So I usually say that that's two magnesium atoms combining with one oxygen molecule, O2 molecule, to form two formula units of magnesium oxide. But we could also kind of think, well, not kind of, we could also scale up those coefficients of 2, 1, and 2 and consider them moles. So this is to say that we could have 2 moles of magnesium atoms. Let me grab my pointer here. 2 moles of magnesium atoms combined with 1 mole of O2 molecules to form 2 moles of magnesium oxide formula units. Now remember what a mole is. A mole is uh, what? A 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay? So, um, of course, two moles is, how do I say this? It, it all works. We could say we could say we have two dozen magnesium atoms uh, react with one dozen of O2 molecules to form two dozen magnesium oxide formula units. We're just taking it all the way up to a mole. Okay, So that's important. Let's see, now I think I kind of summarize it here. So uh, those stoichiometric coefficients we had on that balanced equation between mag that showed magnesium reacting with oxygen to form magnesium oxide, that those stoichiometric coefficient give coefficients, excuse me, give relative amounts of ingredients or reactants that go to form products, relative amounts. And so we're kind of setting ourselves up here momentarily to do some stoichiometric 
um, stoichiometric calculations using those stoichiometric coefficients.